there how are you this is Lois welcome back to my channel today I want us to talk about what happens when your refugee claim is denied okay that is the subject for this video it's gonna be a very short video I'm gonna to try to do that uh, but I want to say if this is your first time the, the only thing that I would ask you to do uh, please subscribe Welcome here. There's a lot of videos that you can go through that I've made in the past and I'll continue to make these kind of videos for my followers. Thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate that. Um, I have to make uh, my legal disclaimer that the video, the information you're going to find here is not uh, legal advice. This is just for your information purposes only. Okay. All right. Um, so, the question is, what is going to happen uh, after your refugee claim is denied? Because as you know, so we've already talked about you submitting your claim, whether you submitted it uh, at the port of entry or at an office here in Canada. And of course, now we've gone to your refugee hearing. You talked about that. And uh, at the refugee hearing, you can have two um, outcomes. And the first outcome, which is a positive one, is if your refugee claim is accepted. If it's accepted, of course you proceed, most of the time you would proceed to apply for permanent residence, okay? But the other outcome is denial, it's refusal, and this happens. So what happens when that is, that is the case? So it's really unfortunate. Uh, it's a really unfortunate situation when uh, your refugee claim is denied. And uh, as you know, refugee cl claims are really sensitive claims. And uh, these are made by people who are running away from situations. So when that refugee claim is denied, uh, then you risk um, the opportunity of you being taken back to your country, the same, same place you're running away and being uh, availed to the same situations that you're running away from. So that is a really dangerous situation to be in because most of the time these are life and death situations. So you being taken back can be quite devastating. I would not wish that on anybody, but these things do happen. And uh, some of the reasons why refugee claims, I'm not saying these are the conclusive reasons why refugee claims get denied, but some of the reasons um, refugee claims get denied are a lack of credibility yes so if your case is found so when the member finds that your case does not have credibility it's full of uh, holes it's not consistent uh, maybe they have found evidence otherwise to your claims you know you cannot substantiate the claims that you have made there uh, so those are things that most likely are going to uh, make your claim be denied so make sure that uh, as I've said make sure that you have a strong case from the word go and that is why especially for refugee claims you should have legal representation from the time you file that claim not after filing it should be before filing simply because uh, they are able to, to 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 make sure that uh you know they advise you on whether even it's 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 eligible on on whether it's a strong case or not a strong case um then uh, you need that uh, preparation by legal counsel you need uh, proper advocacy uh, you need to provide uh, enough evidence because remember uh, the burden of proof lies with you so it's up to you to prove your case it's not up to the member or the minister to go out there looking for information that can help your case no if they're looking for any information it will be for any information to refute your case so it's up to you to make sure that your case is well uh, advocated for so yeah these are the things that uh, if you don't do them right then you're going to have that denial and unfortunately it's bad um however i have seen cases really good cases get denied credible cases get denied and that still goes back to you know it's not just bad cases there are people who have who may have bad cases uh, but there are people who have really credible cases but then things like language you know trauma because most of the people who are going through refugee have gone through trauma and 
those things do come up at refugee hearings so it's always good to be prepared as i have said in the past be prepared for your refugee hearing because you know what uh, most of the time uh, your life really depends on it so uh if god forbid you get the negative what happens i just want to tell you uh, when you uh, when you file your refugee case, uh, whether it's at the border or in a Canadian office, one the most uh, important document you'll be given at that point is a, a removal order. Okay, you always go home with a removal order. However, that removal order is called an enforceable. It cannot be enforced at that point because you are waiting for your claim to be heard. So you get the unenforceable removal order that CBSA cannot act on at that moment. However, in the outcome of a refusal of that claim, CBSA may act on that and remove you out of Canada. And when I say remove, unfortunately i mean deport okay yes yeah, so you have that so all this time when you're waiting for your hearing you have that removal order somewhere okay it's just that it cannot be enforced but you're going to continue to do your stuff as you wait for your hearing guess what on the day of the hearing if you get a rejection if you get a rejection then uh your removal order may become enforceable if you do not uh, take one of the actions that we're going to talk about uh, just in a minute so if you're not appealing because you need to be appealing if you do not appeal or if you don't have any other options in the legal system then uh, unfortunately your removal order becomes enforceable and CBSA are going to proceed to remove you out of Canada so what are these options that you have um, immediately make sure always and I'm going to repeat this I know this is quite repetitive but I cannot say it enough when you go for your hearing make sure you have your legal representation have your legal counsel with you and uh, once you're rejected once you get that rejection uh, ask your legal counsel on what options you have because um, you may be eligible for appeal uh, then again not all cases are eligible for appeal it depends on why your case was rejected so if your case is eligible for appeal you can appeal at the refugee appeal division that is the the RAD that is where you would appeal and your legal representation uh, representative is going to tell you whether you are eligible you only appeal if you really believe or if you know there's reason to believe that the ruling was wrong okay maybe they did not consider all the evidence or there's something in that uh in your case that was not fully and rightfully considered that time you can appeal at the rad okay again i say not all cases so make sure you uh you get the real definition of who can appeal at that point uh because uh that is uh that should come from your from your legal uh counsel if you're not eligible to appeal at the RAD you may be able to appeal not actually appeal but it is uh, you can file a judicial review at the Federal Court of Canada I just want to say that filing a judicial review is a hard process it's a complicated process it's a very expensive uh, process as well and the only people who can represent you uh, for JR are only lawyers who uh, go to federal court it's not every lawyer who does proceedings at the federal court so that is why it's going to be an expensive uh, process okay all right uh, so you have those two options so if you're appealing at the RAD be very uh, be very conscious because again time is of essence remember you have that an enforceable removal order so uh time is of essence at this point because you only have 15 days to file from the day okay assuming so you get uh your response on that day or you know you may get it the next day but from the day you get that denial 
or that refusal of your claim, you only have 15 days to file your notice of appeal at the RAD. 15 days. So you've got to be acting very quick. Uh, and once you file uh, that notice of appeal, you have 30 days, 3-0, you have 30 days to explain and perfect your appeal. Why? That, that is now at the point whereby you are working with your legal counsel to explain as to why you believe that the ruling was wrong. So you can see you don't have that much of time. You don't have the luxury of time. So be very, uh, be very quick, uh, have everything ready. Please, please, please. This is a crucial time because already you have been denied. So your chances are very slim. Okay, so you do not want to jeopardize this uh, by messing up with the timelines. Okay, right. Um, so if you've done that, uh, maybe you've appealed, uh, then you wait for your appeal and you wait for it for your ruling. Um, there are other options that can make you stay in Canada longer. Yes, and I said stay longer. Or uh, some of them could actually lead to a status. These are not easy pr procedures to do, but I'm going to name them here. So if you've been in Canada after your refusal and you've been in this country for one year and you have, uh, CBSA still have not knocked on your door, they haven't uh, removed you, then at that point, CBSA is going to let you apply for something called a PRA. And that is a... Uh, a pre a pre removal risk assessment a pra is p r r a that is a pre removal uh, risk assessment and this is a, a form that you will feel just before you, before it's a last chance that they give you before they remove you um, that should also now list down the risks that you should face should you go back to your country. And these risks now should not be part of the reasons why you sought for refugees. So this is uh, another complicated uh, procedure. So make sure that uh, you have legal representation when you're filing for PRA. Uh, PRAs don't have very good success rates. Yes, uh, they have very slim success rates, but uh, you're still going to be given the opportunity to file for a PRA. You do not uh, initiate, you as the claimant, you do not initiate a PRA application that comes from CBSA. Uh, then um, there is another option. So also after you've been here and you've not been removed and it's over one year, uh, at that point, uh, you may consider, depending on your situation, especially people who have children, uh, you may consider applying for a humanitarian and compassionate application. This is a whole big application, can take years and drugs. And as you can see, all these kinds of applications for refugee and humanitarian applications, uh, they take a long time. So they can be quite mentally uh, draining. Yes, you're already going through a lot of emotions you've been denied you can see your food out of the door you know uh, so these are processes and procedures that are, are quite mentally and psychologically draining but uh, yes it's okay it's it's always good to try you never know if you don't try then you won't know uh, people do their hard things but come on where there is a will there is a way and people do actually apply for humanitarian and compassionate uh, you just ask the minister to consider you to stay in Canada on humanitarian and compassionate grounds uh, may be in the best interest of a child or whatever. Uh, so you can apply for that. Those uh, That kind of an application really does take a long time. Okay? All right. So those, uh, in a nutshell, are some of the options that you have uh, in case your refugee application uh, is denied. So if you have any question you want to reach out uh, to me, please uh, send me an email. My email is going to be at the description of this video. Uh, send me an email and please book a consultation. All right, so uh, what I just want to emphasize on is before you file your refugee claim, please make sure take your time. And this is why I tell people, if you can avoid uh, filing at the port of entry, that is good because it gives you time to recollect, you know, to go through everything, to go through, you know, uh, the events, uh, the timelines and everything, just to make sure that you don't have these holes and inconsistencies and make sure that actually you have a case that is eligible uh, to appear before a member 
of the of the refugee board okay then that way at least even if you're denied you know that you did the best that you could do to advocate for yourself because again as i've said lives are at stake and uh if you're removed unfortunately if you exhaust all this if you exhaust all this and still don't get any way forward, then CBSA is going to be removing you from Canada. There are various types of removal. We are going to be talking about that. I'll make a video about the various types of removal uh, because some of the removals you get, um, they, they vary depending on the, uh, you know, on why you were rejected. So yeah, we shall talk about that. Okay. Thank you so much uh, for joining me. Thank you for staying here. If you really like this video, please share it. Okay. All right. Thank you. I appreciate. See you at my next video. Bye.